All right, this video is going to go over how to solve first order differential equations when they are written in linear form and we want to use an integrating factor in this case. So just to remind you, a linear equation means that you have y prime and then a function of x as its coefficient plus y and then a function of x as its coefficient and then equals another function of x. We want to write this in standard form, meaning the leading coefficient in front of that first derivative is 1. So you're going to divide everything through by that a1 term. And then our big interest is going to be this p of x function in front of y. Now the textbook goes into a full method of solution as to why we do what we are about to do. The key here is you want to try to figure out a product such that some function of x times y gives you this piece here, which is what we're gonna see in our linear term. Notice that there's a function of y or a derivative of y, excuse me, and then a derivative of, or just a regular y here. All right, again, you can go through, if you really, really want to, you can pause the video at any point in time and take as many notes as you would like to. Um, but the key here is we're going to let that mu function be equal to e to the integral of p of x dx where p of x is this standard form p of x. When you do that, you have then found that mu that goes right here. So that's going to be our key. That is what we call our integrating factor. All right, we're gonna multiply through by that mu. And when you do that, we're gonna be able to take the derivative of mu times y. And we're gonna say it's equal to mu times your right hand side. You're then going to be able to integrate both sides, just leaving you with mu y equals the integral of that right hand side. And then you'll be able to solve that for y. Here are some steps if you need them on what we are about to be doing. All right, example one. In this case, we're already written in standard form. And so my P of X is equal to negative three. Therefore, mu must be E to the integral of negative three dx. There's no need to write your c here because you get e to the c. That's a constant. Derivatives end up canceling that stuff out eventually. So just know that you just need to take the integral with no constant of integration. And it's just, it's not the integral of the e piece. It's the integral of that exponent. All right, if I multiply through everything by that mu, then what you should see here is if this was mu times just y, and I said take the derivative of that, we would get first derivative of the second plus derivative of the first times the second. So it makes sense that this piece is the derivative of this product. And then my right hand side just gives me zero because anything times zero gives me zero. I'm going to integrate. Well, this just cancels and I'm left with e to the negative 3x times y must be equal to some constant. I'm going to integrate with respect to x on both sides, I should say. Okay, um, just gives me some constant over here. 
And so when I divide by e to the negative 3x, I can say that y must be c e to the positive 3x. For any parameter c, I could then plug this in and check and make sure that that is indeed a solution to my differential equation given here. All right, let's look at another example. Notice this example is not written in standard form, so I need to divide everything through by x first. My mu, my integrating factor, is then e to the integral of negative 4x dx. That gives me e to the natural log. If I pull that negative 4 in the front here, then I have natural log of x. Don't worry about the plus c. Now, with log rules, I can take that power up. So this is really e to the natural log of x to the negative 4th. And I like that because then, I just have x to the negative fourth is my mu. Now let's just shortcut and say, well then I know the product rule of mu times y must be equal to the right hand side times mu. 4x e to the x. All right, well, when I integrate both sides with respect to x, I get x to the negative 4 times y equals, ooh, I have parts here. So x e to the x minus e to the x. Here we do need that integrating constant plus c. And then I could multiply through by x to the fourth for a final answer. Okay, and either of those would be perfect. Um, I do want to make sure I go back and check, but I do know that x cannot be equal to zero on my domain. So depending on what my initial condition is, um, either I will only go from 0 to infinity or negative infinity to 0, probably 0 to infinity just based on domains that we normally use in these contexts. All right, let's look at one final example here. Um, again, I need to make sure that I put this in standard form. And notice how I chose to write this piece here, because I know I need it in that one dy dx function p of x times y, and then this one's equal to zero. And so mu is e to the integral of this here. If you notice the derivative of the bottom, 2x is kind of here in the top, like if I had a 2 here and then maybe a 1 half just to keep equality there, then I could say that this is 1 half natural log of x squared minus 9. Now x squared minus 9 cannot be equal to 0, so x cannot be equal to plus or minus 3. And in order to get this to cancel out, I can take my one half up here. And now I have square root. So now, oh goodness, not only do I say not equal to plus or minus three, but I need x squared plus x squared minus nine, excuse me, to be always greater than zero. Well, if I have numbers between negative three and three, that's not going to happen. 
So my intervals would only be this now for my domains. Because if I plug in zero, then I'm going to get negatives. And we're not worried about complex numbers um, in our solutions here. All right, so that means that the derivative of square root of x squared minus 9 times y must be equal to 0. Don't forget, just because we kind of shortcut to this, you are still multiplying by the mu, but just this is, I shouldn't write a division part, but like this piece right here, right, is 0. Okay, so then I integrate both sides with respect to x, and I get this piece here times y is equal to some constant. And so y must be that constant over this piece. And then again, if I wanted to find a specific solution, I would only be able to find it on these two intervals.